Asia. For example, Design in China, Beijing's Design Week, which began in 2002, in order to showcase the best in Chinese design. The week is organized as a platform in Asia for display, promotion, exchange, and trading of creative designs. Red Dots, China Good Design, is also drawing attention to the ways in which designers generate and communicate high quality cultural outputs. The award scheme is judged by an international expert panel, which helps in benchmarking on a global level the potential strength of Chinese design. We know that during the immediate post-Second World War period, with the exception of Shanghai, that commercial graphic design was seen as a symbol of Western lifestyle, which was encouraging the consumption of unnecessary products. It wasn't until the 1960s, when the American Henry Steiner arrived in Hong Kong, where he demonstrated the ways in which Chinese cultural symbols and written characters could be incorporated into his otherwise, China, uh, otherwise Western style designs. Steiner used the metaphor of a chameleon to describe his approach to design in his book, Cross-Cultural Design. And here he writes, chameleons reflect local color, but retain their form. Ideally, designers are representative of their own culture, yet adaptive to new surroundings. The goal is to achieve a harmonious juxtaposition, more of an interaction than a synthesis. Now Steiner draws upon the symbolism of local references. The pearl, for example, is an exotic oriental jewel. Or in this image, the reference to the red and white design of traditional Cantonese opera mask. As one historian has noted, Steiner, who is a figure who is pictured in the chair uh, on the left here, is performing Chineseness in an effort to create a cross-cultural design. And this continues to suggest that Steiner applies the surface image of a local Chinese culture to international Western business. Now I'd like to turn to more recent examples offered by visual communication graduates of the Royal College of Art and explore for a moment the role design education plays in cross-cultural dialogues. Whereas Steiner used metaphor and symbolic imagery in his communication, that of the poster, today we are finding designers exploring more in-depth references taken from an everyday experience. Part of this has to do with what the everyday means in different cultural contexts. It is more experiential than symbolic and exploring new ways of communicating ideas and experiences. The role of the visual is key to this dialogue. For students who come from outside of the UK, there is often a strong desire to explore both the difference and the similarities between their home countries and the UK experience. So many of their projects will build upon their knowledge of the role of the everyday in their own lives. These provide one form of cultural dialogue with other students who they share and exchange views on cultural experiences. And this is one example from Shannon Tian who wanted to explore the, fr the fragile quality of the photographic object, but also the fragility of life as well as history and its memories. She became fascinated with the found photographs and car boot sales, and she would take these images of Western culture, cut them apart, and reconstruct them by uh, threading them together, weaving them together as if a basket. So these are actually quite three-dimensional objects. She was very much interested in creating a new kind of experience. She wanted to look at um, what constituted not only a new picture, 
but a new world behind it. And this is one that she was bringing her understanding of her own family culture and family photographs into this Western context. Now, another student, for example, who's on our information experience design program, wants to use the idea of place as a catalyst for exploring the question, what if we use wind to represent wind? Her piece, Within Invisibility, is a wind data-based art project. The core concept is to skip the jargon of conventional wind charts or wind speed visualization and to transfer wind data into real windy atmosphere, connecting data with multi-sensational experiences. And this piece is constructed from 80 fans with blue LED lights resting on blades, where there's a data stream coming in and creating particular speeds for each of the blades and therefore the lights going around. And here's a close-up of it as an installation in a gallery. The cross-cultural dialogue comes from bringing together different educational traditions. And she builds upon these learning bases. Her interest is bringing the data stream from 40 cities in China into London and asking questions around the city's climate, the landscape, and even the infrastructure and traffic that may be impacted by the wind. My next example is a collective of four students, three Chinese students and one Korean, who came together on the visual communication program to curate a collaborative exhibition in London. They were interested in exploring their own approaches to experimental image making from using multiple screens to mirrored objects. The students were involved in an elective which we called Design Without. And Design Without meant that each student was asked to respond to a brief each week, but without any rules, without any guidelines and without determining what their outcome might actually be. It was an experimental class and a way for challenging the notions of the designer's own practice and their own worldview. Now these students are at the intersection of art and design practice, a common occurrence amongst many of our students. They've relished the creativity and freedom of the Royal College of Art, but it has also allowed them to be expressive and experimental. And as one of the students remarks, it is the communication that is important. We don't care so much about the media. We deal with it all. It's the topic that is important. These last couple of projects that I'd like to show you are from a student who wanted to draw upon her observations when she was sitting in airports and moving between China and the UK. And she was interested in how people chose to distance themselves from each other uh, when they sat down. So in an airport lounge, people often would sit several seats apart instead of sitting next to strangers that they didn't know. So exploring the spatial quality of the physicality of these individuals. I'm not doing justice to her work in that it's an experimental film of which you are only seeing uh, one still frame. But she continued to explore this idea through individuals and through objects and what this actually meant. So experiences are the sharing of these and it's at the heart, I think, of cross-cultural dialogues. Whether this is through using experiences to create new ways of expressing data, memories, and language of form, as in the bodies here, or through shared educational experiences, which are made manifest through exhibitions. What we do as educators to provide these learning platforms will inevitably inform and shape the ways in which these experiences are communicated. And I would argue that the art school context provides students with a line of questioning 
they provide students in theoretical understandings to be critical thinkers, but also critical makers. They are experimental lab platforms for the students to move forward. And there's a great deal of dialogue in student-led forums where they have those conversations. And I just leave you with the last image where a student is questioning the uh, exploration and the critique of the emerging consumer and brand culture in China. Thank you. Thank you very much. A very illuminating insight into the value of art and education in cultural uh, transformation and personal transformation. Uh, I'd like to conclude uh, by welcoming Professor Jia Li Le, who is the Vice President of uh, China's National Academy of Arts. Uh, we're very privileged to have him with us today. And uh, I hope that his talk will serve as a roundup of um, this afternoon's event. Uh, he's particularly uh, expert in film studies and is going to be talking to us today about the aesthetic style of martial art dancing in uh, Chinese martial arts movies. So, Professor Jeff.